I can't stop the car! I want to! No one can stop it! What's up guys? Indeed, MSI is entering the handheld gaming scene with their MSI Claw. Now, they did tease this about a week ago at the time of making this video. There's been all kinds of rumors swirling around, but with CES, uh, this week they have come out and officially announced this thing, and I just want to talk about it a little bit. We will be testing out and getting the higher-end model here. Uh, when it releases and doing comparisons to uh, the Z1 Extreme stuff. Um, but until then, I figured we'd go over some things here about uh, the MSI Claw and maybe some of my thoughts on what uh, this device is up to. Now, it looks a lot like the ROG Ally, like a lot like the ROG Ally. It, ha it has a very, very similar... Um, design, but we are sporting completely different hardware, which is what makes this device more interesting for me. The Intel Core Ultra 7, which is what's going to come with the higher two higher end models, um, I realize that it's not made to run at lower TDP. Don't care about that. I don't think Z1 Extreme should be running under like 20 watts itself. Anyways, that's where it gets its best performance between 20 and 30 and uh, you want low TDP, that's a Steam Deck custom build. So I'm not upset about a lot of the people talking about the, uh, the, the higher TDP this thing is going to run and so on and so forth. Um, and I kind of expected that with Intel versus AMD anyways. But I'll be interested to see what they do there, especially between the cooling. We do have that larger uh, battery by a bit. That's not a lot bigger than what's in the Legion Go, but it is a good bit bigger than their, what, 50 watt hour or so battery there. And then MSI Center M, which all of these handhelds have their own little interface to access your games, your settings, and all of that. And until Microsoft does something with Windows to specifically make a handheld mode that works with these handhelds, much like Steam has with their Steam OS and their desktop mode, it is going to be up to all these companies like Asus, MSI, Lenovo, and so on to make these uh, these pieces of software and the way you interact with your device to be as good as possible. And up to this point, as much as I love my Legion Go, it is my go-to handheld. It is one of my favorites. The ROG Ally uh, has done more for their software side with their armory crate than uh, than anybody else, in my opinion. It is pretty good. All right, but anyways, ergonomics, like this thing is basically, like I said, it looks like an ROG Ally, the way it's designed, but with Steam Deck grips. And yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I actually don't really love the, uh, the flatness of the ROG Ally. Um, like a little brick. I, I like the device, but it's, I have larger hands. Even the Legion Go here is like almost big enough for me. <laughs> so, um, I will, I will appreciate having grips on, on the claw there. And then of course we were talking about the, um, the software these companies got to throw in these things to make them more accessible for everyone. I'll say, um, MSI has been doing a lot with their like Dragon desktop software, other pieces of software to really uh, get in and and get to all your settings and things like that. If they do a good job here and it's not buggy, um, just from screenshots and things I've seen, it looks like it's going to be a pretty decent experience at launch. What's been the big problem with all of these, even Asus when they first released the Ally, was they were just felt half-baked. Uh, same thing with the Go. Uh, it, it just comes out and whether it's drivers or especially this software to interface with your device, it just wasn't uh, ready to go. I'll also say that this looks very much like Armory Crate in a lot of ways, down to color and design and how they have some of this, but uh, with, with obviously some differences here. It's not um, like MSI doesn't have their own things in the works, but a lot of what's going on here between the software and the device itself does look a lot like the Ally with just a splash of the Steam Deck uh, in there. Now, uh, next gen hybrid performance. So we're going up to the Ultra 7. Let me jump over here to a Tom's Hardware article I was looking at yesterday. And this has like the MSI pricing release dates, uh, or sort of anyways. So the MSI Claw comes in several config configurations. The starting model costs $699, uh, has a 7 inch LCD uh, 1080p 120Hz panel, and an Intel Core Ultra 5 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, so on and so forth. Uh, 749 uh, will be the next upgrade. That's going to take you to the Intel Core or Intel Core Ultra 7 uh, with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage. And then the 799 model is supposed to be the same thing: the Ultra 7, 16 gigs of RAM for uh, and one terabyte of storage uh, for 799. So I'm a little disappointed that our higher end model is not going to come in with 24 or 32 gigs of storage uh, RAM. 
because 16 gigs just really isn't cutting it for me on the Legion Go or on the Ally. It works for a lot of things and, and we get through it. But uh, having to change the VRAM sometimes for certain games, uh, if you have to push above four allocation, like into six, you really gimp your system at about 9.5 gigs available um, total. And after you boot your device, you've got maybe four or five of that. It's not enough to really do much or to run games. So I want to see 24 or 32. So we could just set to eight on the VRAM, leave the rest for the system, ride it out, play all your games. So a little disappointed in that. But, uh, you know, I know everyone's trying to keep things price competitive as these mainstream companies are coming out with these devices. I do expect Acer and Dell to uh, land some devices soon as well. And then Tom's Hardware says expect MSI Cloth to launch somewhere sometime in February. Now, I haven't been able to find any true information on the launch of the device. Um, however, what I'm hearing is like it'll be the low end the first model that releases in February, and then it'll be a staggered release for the other ones. But maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm right on that. Anybody that knows more about the actual launch window can let me know. I haven't been able to go search like where to buy or find out where we're going to get them from. I'm assuming Best Buy here in the States, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, power that lasts up to 50% longer compared to the market average. Really wondering about what that battery is really going to do. MSI is saying full workload two hours. Um, Full workload at what wattage, though, uh, is what I'm wondering. Because this thing can really span. Uh, this Intel chip can really span on on the wattage. Uh, MSI or Mystic Light, I already used this on all my desktops, so that'll be part of the thing. It looks like we're going to be able to change the face button colors, too, which I think is kind of cool. So we'll see how that, how that turns out. Although a lot of times I kill the RGB if I'm caring more about battery or whatever, but it just depends. I'm not a person that cares that much about battery life as much as I am performance. Uh, of the device. The seven inch screen, I don't know, man, I'm really getting used to the larger OLED screen on the Steam Deck OLED. The screen on the Legion Go, in my opinion, is still one of the best, most immersive handheld screens. Um, the Ally screen is fine, but it's my least favorite except for having VRR, which brings us to the next thing is, will this thing have VRR? And I have read multiple articles and all of them say at some point they've been told it's possible that it could have VRR, but they don't know yet. Well, if we're a month out from the base model or any of the models releasing potentially in February, they have to know this already. And my assumption is that it won't, even though the screen looks so much like the Ally screen. So kind of a missed opportunity, I think, if they're going to do that with no VRR, even though the screen just about looks like the Ally screen. But I guess we'll have to see uh, how that comes out. I do like that they are using the Hall Effect triggers and joysticks. Um, I just have a personal preference for those, so that's nice. Um, expandability, high-res audio. I expect it to compete with the Ally on audio. Of course, we'll be testing all of that when it comes out. I do love that it has the fingerprint button reader. I hope that their micro SD card uh, issues up here where the thermals are blowing out isn't going to be uh, any kind of a problem. Uh, we've seen that issue on the Ally. I certainly need to RM, RMA mine if I want to get it fixed. But other than that, it's basically looking like the design of the Ally with Steam Deck grips, some additional features with the RGB and stuff like that, and of course running the new Intel hardware, which that's really one of the things I am most excited about is that Intel hardware because I didn't want to just test another Z1 Extreme. I can grab my Go or my Ally, do game testing, and show you basically what a Z1 Extreme is going to perform like, even though the Go does tend to outperform by just a little bit um, over the Ally. But yeah, it's it's basically that. So I'm very happy we're not just getting another Z1 Extreme device here uh, because it would make it much less compelling, in my opinion, versus this new Intel hardware. That would be a lot more fun to test out and check. Uh, with them, I do have some concerns about Intel's um, driver support for their GPU side, but they have been working very hard on the desktop side for that. Um, so hopefully when it comes to this device, Intel will do a great job with the drivers and support this device. AMD doesn't give us updated drivers for the Z1 Extreme on the handhelds. The companies like Lenovo and Asus have to go and get the drivers, work on them themselves, and, uh, and, and put them up for update. It takes... Uh, a couple of weeks, a month or more sometimes that we're behind. So AMD will put out a driver that, say, fixes something like Avatar or whatever. We don't have that driver yet on the Ally or the Legion Go. We have a newer update, but it's still behind what the new stuff is because AMD doesn't support through Adrenaline just updating these on their own. And that's been a big gripe of mine with the Z1 stuff. Um, the AMD dropped the ball on that, in my opinion, leaving it up to the companies. Now, if MSI isn't 
uh, fully on their own here for the driver stuff and Intel is going to actually support this device even though I have concerns about Intel on that I would rather see that so I hope that winds up being the case with the MSI claw but anyways guys I think I'll leave it there there's only so much to talk about right now I don't like to do too much preemptive stuff I want to wait till I get the device in my hand I can compare it to both my Steam decks my go my ally whatever and we can really dive in uh, to it more unfortunately I don't get things early or free here so I will have to pre-order like everyone else pay for it wait to get it and then start covering it but uh, that's how we do here and I do enjoy covering these handhelds and comparing them here on the channel so we'll definitely be grabbing one of these up let me know if you guys are interested in the MSI claw at all or if you you think you might be grabbing one of these up as well all right guys thanks a lot for coming to check out the video as always i really appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one